going to jump down to Nautilus also, just because Nautilus. they all have similar movements, but you're looking for different things. So out of context, you're looking at them for different areas and different things. Why don't you move that way and I'll go over here. Okay. Prone knee bend. Okay, so in keeping with the neurological signs, uh, occasionally we run in... Okay. I'm too close. Okay? Yes, we're going to look at uh, prone knee bend. Okay? But notice Eli's is in two different places. Okay? So it depends on how you interpret it. Okay? So with a prone knee bend, all I'm doing is this. So we do nerve tension signs, our SLR, our Lesegs, our Braggers, all that kind of stuff we just did, and even part of the slump, okay, looks for lower root levels, primarily L4, L5, and L5S1. So there's a cutoff around L3. Once in a blue moon, okay, you may get a high disc lesion, lesion or you have a mass that's higher up in the lumbar spine. I may have seen one, okay? They just don't happen very often, right? Uh, so a nerve tension sign for those higher root levels is prone knee bend. So this is like L1, 2, and 3 as it pulls through the femoral nerve. Those are the root levels that supply the femoral nerve, okay? So as I do this, I pull in front of the thigh, I pull the femoral nerve, which pulls all the way up L1, L2, and L3 areas, okay? Primary two and three. If there's a disc lesion or anything up here, then what am I looking for once again? Ridicular. Ridicular pain from a higher root level, okay? So again, watch your headings in my exam form because it'll tell you what you're doing, okay? I, I, even during the practical, I say, well, what are you doing that for? I don't know. I'm like, read the damn form. It's right there in front of you. <laughs> okay? So, so this is prone knee bend looking for that aspect. Now, what may happen also because of the femoral nerve, let's say she gets some numbness and tingling just in the anterior portion of the thigh, anterior lateral portion of the thigh, okay? And I have her pointed out. I say, show me where you feel it, okay? Uh, but it's really from the inguinal ligament down to where she feels it, she may have entrapment of the lateral femoral cutaneous at the inguinal ligament, okay? And it gets pulled through there. So if, it's, if, the, if the numbness, tingling, burning, all that is kind of above the ligament and below the ligament, it's higher up here. If it's from the ligament down, it's probably just the femoral cutaneous, okay? So that is uh, prone knee bend, okay? Eli's uh, it can also be seen in that same situation, but Eli's, you do this, guys, watch. I'm going to rotate the leg over, and I'm going to approximate the heel to the opposite butt. I'm going to hold it there. I'm going to place my forearm on her SI, and I'm going to hyperextend. Okay? That's a true Eli's. Some places you go may just go heel to opposite butt, butt and call it a day, okay? But there's an extra sensitizing aspect of that. Generally, when you hyperextend that leg, that's when it kicks in and pulls those upper root levels, okay? So you're gonna feel it back here? Uh, no, in this case, I'm looking for the numbness and tingling in front of the thigh. Oh, okay. In this context. Okay. Okay. Now, in Eli's, in a different context, because it's written twice in your form, I'm going to look at it along with Nocla's. Okay, so look on your form for Nocla's. We're now getting into lumbar issues, just mechanical back pain issues. Nocla's is heel to butt, and I'm looking for pain around the lumbosacral junction. Okay. So more spine related, not neuro, but more structural, okay? If I go heel to opposite butt, which is Eli's, again, I'm looking for lumbosacral junctional pain, okay? So spine pain, right? 
So it depends on what context you're doing Eli's in and how you're doing it. That's why it's written under two different headings. Okay? Good. Roll over. On my back. Boca arriba, por favor. Gold Thwaites. Gold Thwaites. I'm looking at, is this a SI or a lumbar problem? I place my hand in the inner spinous spaces, L5, S1, L4, L5, as many as little digits as I can get in there, L3, L4, and I'm gonna to start to raise her leg. If she says, ow, I'll ask her where and point it out, okay? but I didn't feel anything in my right hand. So this has to be in the pelvis or SI area primarily. If I continue to come up and I start to feel her sacrum pull away from L5, come on up, L5 pull away from four and just stair step up, okay? And she says, ow, up here, then I say it's in the lumbar spine. I'm looking more towards the lumbar spine for my pathology, okay? So it's, all, it's a differential for is it SI or lumbar, okay? Um, stand up. Come here. Belt test. I say bend over. Do you have any pain or discomfort with that? And they go, in this area. They're very nonspecific. So I don't, again, I don't know if it's SI, I don't know if it's low back. Come back up. I'm going to fixate her sacrum against my thigh. I'm gonna hold her ASISs like a belt. And I'm gonna say go forward again. Okay, and you gotta hold them tight, hold, go as far as you can. They will not be able to go as far because of what? What am I taking out of the picture? <laughs> I'm taking out the, the SI and hip flexion also, right? So if they still have pain, you know it's lumbar. If the pain goes away with support, then you know it's SI, okay? So that's your differential between those two, all right? We've got a couple minutes. 